as well as many of you individually, I've talked to you about them. And I'm going to go through them very quickly, but I think that that's important that um, I think people understand that I've got a pretty clear idea of the things that I want to try to get done in the next couple of years. Whether I'm successful or not is going to be up to me as a leader. But I thought it would be important that I just share kind of some of the priorities that I'm going to pursue in the next few years. <coughs> First is city finances. Any organization, whether it's public, private, or ci civic, cannot be successful with sound financial footing. Unfortunately, that's true with anything. You can't do anything without the resources to make it happen. And there's no question that with limited growth in the tax base, I think we had 0.04% last year, Neil, which compared to a lot of other communities, just having some growth in your community was very important. A lot of communities actually had negative growth. And um, declining fee revenue, building fees, ambulance fees, all the things that you pay the city for a specific service have declined for a lot of different reasons. And less state money, say, but the situation, as you know, is very dire. And unfortunately, our, our city and communities are going to see less state aid. We have our work cut out for us, there's no question. But I feel very confident that, that based on my experience as council president and some of the budget experience that I have, that by prioritizing our services and making some tough decisions, we can minimize the impact on city services and hold the line of tax Next, focus economic development strategy. Neil would like to hear this. As you well know, we are competing. There is no question that Sun Prairie as a community is competing against other cities and other regions for economic growth and retention. And I want to make it very clear that retention, because like everybody falls in love with the new project. Everybody thinks it's going out and getting a Target or a Marcus. And I think the statistic, again, you will correct me, is that it's a very high percentage, 70 to 80% of the job growth in any given community or region comes from incumbent businesses. It comes from you, the people that are running our businesses. And I think it's very important that uh, we have a very focused retention as well as attraction strategy. Because if you're not happy with your business our community, you're not going to grow. And you're certainly not going to tell people that are thinking about moving here it's a good place to do business. So I think we need to make sure we have a balanced approach between job attraction, new, new attraction of economic development projects, as well as retention. That's a very important thing. And I know partnering with the chamber is going to be extremely important to be successful with that. I put a proposal out there, and, and my goal in the first month was obviously to kind of figure out where everything was without making too many people upset. But I put out a plan out there to beef up the community development authority and turn it into a more robust marketing and economic development entity. And as they say, anytime you try to change things, you're kind of moving people's cheese. I think you've read that book. <laughs> it's challenging because you change the status quo, somebody likes the status quo, somebody doesn't like the status quo, otherwise you can try to change it. But I believe that by working with the Chamber, uh, Business Improvement District, other civic groups, that we can retain and grow local jobs, uh, jobs and increase our tax base. We just need to be very focused about it because we're competing. Next, clean up underperforming multifamily housing and provide incentives to convert them to owner occupied. The increase of apartments and condos in our city, coupled with downturn in the economy, it created a glut of essentially rentals intended or not intended. And what happened was, as those condominiums were essentially not able to sell them, people rented them. And you understand that. They've got a mortgage, they've got a note on them that they've got to pay. But in some cases, they lowered the standard for the property management and they lowered the standards for the tenant screen. And I think that that has caused us quite a bit of problems in terms of building enforcement, in terms of calls for service. What I'm going to be proposing as part of the CDA <coughs> is to put some incentives out there to convert some of those apartments and condos into owner-occupied units and upgrade the physical standards of those units. I think it's the best tool that the city can put forward along with building inspection as well as the other resources we have to try to turn around some of those underperforming assets that will be to the economic benefit of our community. <coughs> Improving our physical infrastructure including roads, water, sewers, and trees. With so much new growth in our city, we underinvested in our existing infrastructure, particularly in older neighborhoods. If you talk to people in neighborhoods like Royal Oaks, Carriage Hills, they say, new growth is great. I like being able to go to the cop store. I like being able to go to the Target. But you know what? I don't feel like our stormwater or our, our sanitary sewer or our trees are maybe being kept up to the standard that it was maybe 20 years ago. And I think it's not just a resource issue, but it's a focus issue. And so, uh, we need to develop a long-term plan to make sure that our physical infrastructure keeps pace with our growth. Last, provide better and more efficient protective services, police, fire, and EMS. And I know our chief back there, 
probably happy to, probably happy to hear this. Oh, I've had a number of conversations with our chief uh, and his team about how we can make sure that those protective services are keeping pace with growth and that with growth, and that we're always looking at innovative ways of, of providing police model. And I want to thank the chief for coming in with some very innovative ideas from the neighborhood patrol program to our task force because. He's really doing a lot of things with, I think, declining resources or limited resources, um, but it is it is the number one responsibility of local government to provide protective services, and we've got to commit to that long term. <coughs> These are my priorities for the next two years, and as mayor, I intend to work with the members of the council, city staff, uh, city stakeholders, and to make significant progress on each of them, if I make progress on them. And that's a big if, because there's a lot of lot of players and a lot of obstacles in the way. I believe I will have protected and enhanced the quality of life in Sun Prairie. That is my vision. And I'm happy to take any questions or talk about any of these particular things, but I want to thank you again for your time, and I want to congratulate the graduates for your commitment. Great, thank you.